Hey, hey, what up, y'all? We back after taking a little hiatus just because we had a bunch of stuff going on. So welcome back to Turn Bark Time. I'm the Turn. I'm the Bark. And we're going to be here a long time. This is season two, episode 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. I was remember. I was wondering if you were you're gonna know the number. I did know the number because we listened to season fifth or we listened to episode fifteen in class today, so that's how I knew. Um, really quick shout out for those of you if you're listening. We are attempting something new and crazy. We are also now on Spotify. Uh, one episode is up on Spotify. We're working our best to see if we can keep it going. Um, so if you're listening to us on Spotify, thanks for the listen. We appreciate it. And you will have to go check out our YouTube channel to get caught up on all the other episodes from season one and season two so far. So one of the things we're going to talk about is actually tonight has been nuts and it's been happening in waves. Like it seems like you can't open any news uh, today without seeing this happening. Barker, what is going on? Um, well, it's not Skynet. I mean, you know, it, it's not the rise of the Terminator, not the rise of the machines yet, but uh, there's been an increase in cyber attacks across the country, and they and they've been morphing in who they're targeting or what sectors they're targeting. So, if you're not familiar with a cyber attack, that essentially means that people hack into a computer system, and, and there's a number of different things, but what they've been using right now is called ransomware, where essentially they get in with some sort of malicious code they lock up a certain amount of data and then as the name implies they ransom it back you know like king richard from the hohenstaufens um just in the digital age yeah so yeah. anyway anyway sorry I'm go down a the rabbit hole if you got that joke and you laugh thank you <laughs> what did he say what what did king richard say to when he got imprisoned so let me go. It could be in such Hohenstaufens. Uh, but anyway, so the biggest one that I guess kind of like the first one, not the first one, but like the first one that hit the news recently in a big way, like a giant cow patty falling off the back of a dairy truck under your windshield on I-5. Yep. Ooh, smell that. Smell that. It. Was uh, There was a hack on the Colonial Pipeline. So the Colonial Pipeline is an oil pipeline, as the name implies that runs from Houston, Texas, all the way to Linden. I'm assuming it's pronounced Linden. It's in the Northeast, so it could be something, Legenden or something, um, New Jersey. So all the way from Texas, Tejas, to New Jersey, um, and it provides roughly half of all petroleum to the East Coast. And so there was a ransomware attack, and they, stole what was it 100 gigs of data yep. put it under the ransomware and they asked for 4.4 million dollars um and i can't remember if they said that they paid them in real money or in uh crypto. bitcoin uh, yeah i thought they asked for cryptocurrency Which that could be a whole episode on its own yeah and that's a that's a whole nother ball game but one of the big things with that was it actually shot um, gas prices through the roof. But what was interesting was, or at least in, in my mind, that a lot of people tried to make the connection between the high gas prices and that. Um, one of the things I read, though, is not just the oil pipeline, but the fact that we're in COVID is, um, restrictions around COVID are dropping. That is also the reason gas prices are rising, because now there's more demand for fuel, because people are going more places, they're vacationing things like that. Um, but this ransomware locked up uh, this data and there's basically, you know, you, you don't have much of a choice in the matter, but to, to pay when it comes to uh, this type of stuff. And I'm trying to find the actual number they asked for, but I'm not seeing it. 
Um, but they do know the group responsible. Um, and that is Digital Shadows. Um, uh, well, sorry. Let me apologize for that. Um, there is a uh, Dark Side, I believe is what it's called. And it's uh, it looks like it's going... It, they have people... Um, stationed what was the did you find that where they thought the attack was like what what do you mean by where sorry like where the people were based out of uh i think that when they're saying russia russia okay so but what we're finding is we're having more and more people uh attack because just last week um or in this last week you've seen that they they had another one over the uh what was it j sorry J. JBS. It's 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 named after Jose Batista Sobrinho, okay. who is a Brazilian meatpacking entrepreneur yep. um, who bought the Swift Meatpacking Company in somewhat questionable manner. But anyway, it is one of the largest meatpacking uh, companies in the United States. It's responsible for one quarter, twenty five percent of all beef. That is uh, packed in America. So where's the beef? Yep. Right? It's at JBS. Um, and also 20% of the pork products in America. And it also impacted their Canadian plants and in Australia. So it was, but it did not affect uh, Brazil. Yeah. America de Sewer was safe. Yep. But uh, everywhere else got attacked. And that was done by Capital R Evil. Yep. Another Russian cybercrime organization. Um, I don't think they paid the ransom in that one, though. They didn't, They at least, or they haven't said. Because no. one of the things that they're doing is that as soon as, as soon as in the colonial, in the colonial pipeline, and the CEO of that company, they're like, why did you pay the ransom? Everybody's seen Air Force One. And yeah. knows, as President Harrison Ford says, America doesn't negotiate with terrorists. Yep. And then he yells, right? get off my plane. <laughs> get off my plane. Um, God, that's great. Yeah, fantastic. Great film. Great film. <laughs> but anyway, um, they asked him about it and said, why did you pay the ransom? And he was like, like, he was like, for the good of the country. He's like, I didn't want to disrupt the supply chain. And I think this is where people... This is where this topic kind of morphed from what we were originally kind of thinking is that these reports come out and then because people say, oh, God, there's going to be a shortage on gas, like everybody and their mother went out with every red, you know, gas can they had in the back of their, you know, Honda hatchback and was like, you know, gassing up and filling up everything. And so it's like, yes, that's also going to drive it up. Not to mention that there's this thing that we just had called Memorial Day where when you look historically gas prices always go way up because people go camping and how do you, and they go boating and they use gasoline so what are the company you know it's there's a high demand so the price goes up you're willing to pay it because marca right you want to get outside and with covid i think there's even more people who are like you know i've locked down i've done my part i got my vaccine now i'm going to go out and i'm going to go play and it's just really interesting because when these things happen, the first articles that come out is like, oh, crap, you know, there's a shortage in gas. Oh, crap. Does this mean that McDonald's is going to run out of burgers? Yeah. The travesty, right? Fast food isn't going to have burgers. And so it's one of those things where it's like, on that one hand, it has an impact on the, um, the economy as a whole. But on the flip side, like, as soon as one of these companies like Colonial, like, gave in and paid the ransom that opens the door for everybody else to say, oh, it worked for them. Right. Why won't it work for us? Or, you know, I mean, it, it kind of motivates people, you know, to, to keep trying these, you know, nefarious people. And I don't know, because what was the other ones? The ones that happened today. Yeah, two happened today. So that's that's kind of the, or two were, I shouldn't say happened today, but two two came out in public today. And, and, the first was the uh, Massachusetts um, Steamboat uh, Authority. Authority. Yep. And they uh, 
they service, uh, what is it, Martha's Vineyard, Wood... Woods Hole, and Nantucket. Nantucket. So they're the basically like the fancier places off of Massachusetts, um, which have, are really known for, for vacationers. Uh, the ferries that would take you to those places are, are that, that authority runs them. And then the other one, which is actually a, a really big one when we think about our country in general, is uh, the MTA uh, out of New York City. So all of the New York City uh, subway system and things like that were attacked today. Um, and that was a, uh, obviously a major attack because you're talking about, you know, functioning the largest city in the United States. Yeah, and one of the things, the only one that I think in Massachusetts, they haven't named where they think it came from yet, um, at least from what I read, and then the Metropolitan Transit Authority, Transportation Authority, the MTA, they think that one based out of China. Yes. Um, so it, it's kind of the, you know, those evil former communist or, you know, pink countries in uh, Asia, Eurasia, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Russia's weird. But one of the other things that's coming out of this too is that I think it's uh, TSA, I believe. Like the same people who, right, screen you at the airport are also in charge of cybersecurity because it's all Patriot Act kind of stuff. Yep. That, where this kind of comes from and protection comes from. And what they've been saying is that like Colonial Pipeline like kind of put off kind of a government audit to like make sure that they were like secure and they're like oh nobody cares nobody care like it's fine it's fine it's fine we'll check it later we'll check it later and so like now it raises this question because in the past a lot of previous ransomware have have targeted large consumer companies like you know what i mean like companies that actually sell product to people that have a lot of you know people that are very popular so like they have money a lot of money where now the dark side people that did the first one, the Colonial Pipeline, said, we well, we didn't want to screw up the economy. We just right. want to make money. Yeah. Um, but the other ones really seem like it's a, you know, starting to kind of bring these concerns of, are they designed at disrupting the American system, right? Like, is it trying to undermine America as a country? Because imagine if you could hack into, you know, a major metropolitan area and turn all the traffic lights off. I'm going to interrupt you. I apologize for all of our viewers. Uh, my dog has something that he's not supposed to have. So one second, I apologize. Parker, keep talking. <laughs> um, lost my train of thought. Oh, but you know, it's interesting because it's now become these disruptions to, you know, uh, what's the word i'm looking for like utilities yeah and this reminds me i apologize for i'm back uh, uh this reminds me of the last um live free or die hard movie where it was a he called it a fire sale i believe justin's long character called it and it was where you attack not only like we've said consumer businesses that you know have money or people's identity saved or anything like that but you're also attacking the transportation district you'll attack the power grids Right, like those things are are susceptible um, to cyber attacks, and it's one of those things where if you don't maintain a security update, right, you're leaving that part at risk. And again, a lot of our power grids are government entities, so you know, for these audits and things like that are updated. But when we talk about more, I guess. I don't want to say this more like you're looking at like transportation, right? Like those things are less, people don't think about them as much, right? It's just kind of an everyday thing. That's the ferry it comes over. This is the subway, right? Beef, right? You're attacking beef, you know, the largest uh, uh, meat cracker and everything like that. And then you think of like pipeline, like gas. So what are you hoping to get when you, you know, do those things versus like consumers, it's really easy. It's like you're attacking, you want people's identity, social security numbers, credit card numbers, anything like that uh, to either sell or use on your own. Whereas 
attacking transportation entities, you're like, wait, what? What are you getting from that? But you're disrupting the economy at that point. So. And I also think it's one of those things that people don't understand that as soon as you, as soon as somebody figures out how to stop one version of ransomware, right? Hackers will inevitably keep working to try and find some other um, weakness in the system. So it's just like this never ending cycle, you know, where the government at times will find hackers and be like, um, you should come work for us. And not all hackers are bad. There are some hackers that will just, they try and see if they can hack a system and then they'll send the company a message and be like, uh, you should look at this. I just, you know, access your, you know, network, whatever. And they say that another thing that's making it more prevalent right now is that because so many people are working from home and so many businesses like schools and, you know, just companies in general, trying to keep people out of their offices and keep them at home and operate over, you know, remote systems or remote desktops. So that just, it's less secure that way because you're relying on people's private internet, you know, do they know how to set up, the, you know, a VPN or whatever? You know, I've you've got people that have been, I've been working here since 1945, you know, and they don't computers so much. And yeah. I, crap, I think I'm pretty tech savvy and like I, that stuff's all over my head. Right. So, I mean, it's just, it's going to lead to, I would hope that there's going to be a, you know, maybe it's a good time to get a computer science degree yeah, uh, and go into like cybersecurity. Yep. And, you know, maybe that's a, just an area that's been underappreciated. And it's, again, for a company, it's something that requires an expenditure of revenue that the company doesn't want to do because it's, you're cutting into profits at that point. Right. Absolutely. And it's, it's kind of the downside of, everything we do is now the technology based right like i was just looking at my phone because if you go to the portland you go to the oregon zoo you can pay your parking with it's called parking kitty is the name of the app it's legit i guess it was legit enough i didn't get a ticket and nobody's stolen my identity or else they've been you know hiding their purchases in azerbaijan really well yeah. but uh <laughs> Just say that they're from Lowe's and I won't notice. But I, I even noticed that when we were in Denver this weekend. So we're in we're in Golden, Colorado, you know, and we pull into the parking garage and it says, oh, download this park mobile app, register your car license plate to this and then just pay. And then that way, if you stayed later or something like that, you could just pay on your phone and keep paying. So and it's I mean, that's just where we're headed. So well, think about like Venmo or Cash App. Yep. where you can literally paypal right i clicked on a link from instagram that looked like a great deal from etsy but it's not from etsy it's from etsygifts.com and i've been threatening them very lovingly to make sure that they're not going to just steal my money and they're going to send us our mickey mouse home sign nice. but uh i'm still waiting <laughs> but somebody else said they got one it took two months so, i mean maybe maybe it's kind of sketch but maybe i'll get it i just gotta be patient Yep. You know, not everybody's Jeff Bezos. Yep. You can get it yep. here in a day and a half or a day or an hour, depending on where you're I am, I am in no way advocating that we all take the Amish route yeah. and red pill our technology and go back to trading chickens for pigs. Right. But it is just one of those things that we have to be, you know, kind of a little bit maybe more thoughtful with what we do. Yep. And I think – the younger generations, like I, we're almost, we're like the middle-aged people now. Yep. Doing those grumpy things. We're like, when I was in middle school, we didn't have a telephone. I had a curmudgeon was, moment the other day too. So, um, you know, it's just it's one of those like things. Like my dad would never would never use his credit card on the internet. If my mom wanted to buy something on Amazon, he would make her go get an a, buy a Visa gift card. Yeah. And then put the gift card onto the internet so if somebody stole it they only stole the gift card yep and and my dad is the same way he would he would they pulled out a separate credit card with a separate amount that they just pay off and that's the online credit card and so it's just they have the online credit card and that's it that's the one that's online none of their other ones are so um well anyway this has been a 
an interesting thing. It's an interesting time to live in. I'm interested to see, like I've said, interest a bunch more, but uh, to see if there's going to be any more attacks and and what their next targets are. And, and are people going to adapt? Are they going to adjust? So. And at what point do, like, we took a stance on aggressive, like, terrorist attacks. Mm-hmm. Do, you know, how to, at what point does, you know, and I know Biden's been in talks with Putin, you know, but at what point do you sit there and you kind of say, well, like, you need to shut your people down in your country because there's different internet expectations on different, you yep. know, different countries, you know, and I was looking at it a while back and it's like, we think that the United States is like the internet where the freedom capital of the world, but it's actually Iceland. Um, so there's more there than pretty girls, volcanic spas and goats. Yep. But um, anyway, you know, I mean, it's it's one of those things we're going to have to look at and kind of update a lot of infrastructure yep. and so updating infrastructure doesn't just mean replacing bridges mm-hmm. but it also means <laughs> maybe those machines shouldn't run on dos anymore yeah exactly <laughs> updating all those programs and everything like that and there's a lot to do and it's a big project to take on so well we hope that you enjoyed our cyber attack uh episode and we will be back we're not sure if it'll be next week or two weeks um, I know we're going to take our summer hiatus coming up, so we got to give the people what they want. Um, other than that, I'm good. Bark, anything from you? No, I can't think of it. I think I'm, I think I'm good. I All think right. I'm good. Hey, everybody. How, uh, for, until next time, I'm the turn. I'm the bark. And we're going to be here a long time. Good night, everybody. Be safe. And be well.